What up guys? It's your boy Pete, back here again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about the AP Physics 1 exam, which I took this past year and actually got a 5 on, so I'm going to teach you guys how I prepare for the exam, and so you can prepare for the exam and hopefully not get frustrated and go jump off a cliff. But if you do, at least you'll be able to calculate the amount of time you have to contemplate your life before you hit the ground. Let's get started. First things first, we're going to talk about the format of the exam. So the AP exam has two sections, uh, so it has a multiple choice section with 50 questions and a free response section with five questions. So both of them count for 50% of your exam score, so you got to do well in both, essentially. So uh, you can use a calculator, it can be scientific or graph, or scientific calculator or graphing calculator, I use a TI-84, but there are some calculators that you can't use, so just be aware and check that online on college board whatever so first things first the ap physics exam is kind of weird because it focuses on concepts so like for example your free response questions you actually have to design an experiment and you also have to write like a short paragraph to like justify your answer in one of them so like you have to really understand the concepts and the multiple choice questions are also more conceptually oriented what this means is that they're not going to ask you like plug and check questions they're not going to ask you if a ball has mass of one kilogram and it's traveling at two meters per second, what is its kinetic energy? They're probably not going to ask you such a simple question. They're going to ask you some other weird question. They're going to test it in a different way. Like, <clears throat> So it's going to be weird. It's not going to be the normal, easy plug and chug. So yeah, let's get into the equations. Throughout the course co that you're taking, if you're taking it out of the class, make sure you are writing down formulas, creating that formula sheet so that in like the last two weeks before the exam, you're not like rushing which I know none of, no one's ever gonna do that. I mean, who studies last minute? I mean, but yeah, excited, at least so that the night before when you actually start studying for the AP exam, you'll have like a sheet of paper that you can just like look at and memorize real quick. So that's pretty great. On to the next section. So now I'm gonna talk about the formulas. So this is just a rundown of pretty much everything. It might take a second, but, and I'm not gonna go too in depth, but just seeing like what formulas and what concepts you kinda need to know. But, so first things first, kinematic equations. You need to know your kinematic equations. There's like four or five equations. Memorize them, know them by heart, save them in your sleep, boom. Okay, Newton's laws, you need to know all three. First, uh, object in motion stays in motion unless acted on by an unbalanced force, or object in rest stays in rest unless I'm acted on by an unbalanced force. So, inertia, F equals MA, and then action reaction pairs. So like, Earth exerts a force on me, but I also exert a force on the Earth. So just remember, when you're depressed, studying for this test, just remember that the Earth is always attracted to you, as well as everything with mass. So pretty much everyone is attracted to you, so just, just live life, man. Okay, so second thing, normal force, that's also pretty great. Uh, I need to know that friction, which is uh, static and kinetic friction, need to know the difference, and also there's a formula associated with that, which is I believe it's force equals uh, or force of friction equals coefficient of static or kinetic friction times the normal force. And you need to know pulleys. Pulleys they ask sorts all sorts of problems with pulleys. Also need to know inclined plane problems. Be familiar with both of those. And so now we've been talking about forces, and now when a force does uh, acts over a distance. It becomes work, and work is also very important on the AP exam. Work equals FD cosine theta. F is a force. D is distance. And cosine of theta, so theta is the angle between the two. Yeah. So you also need to know uh, kinetic energy, potential energy, uh, so at least gravitational potential energy, as well as kinetic energy. So yeah. Uh, you also need to know power, which is the rate at which the work is done, so work divided by time. You also need to know momentum, and you also need to know impulse. So that's important, and you also need to know collisions, the difference between elastic and inelastic collisions. And now we're going to move on to circular motion. So you have a formula, F equals MA, right? That's your base standard formula. In circular motion, we're going to take that and make it centripetal force equals mass times centripetal acceleration. So centripetal acceleration is, the, is equal to V squared divided by R. That's a formula you need to know. And then you also have another, which is uh, another formula that's associated with uh, a lot of times with planets and uh, planets orbiting. 
and that is the law of Newton's law of gravitation, which is just uh, constant g times m1 times m2 divided by r squared, which is the distance between them. So yeah, that's great. So and you can also, a lot of times in physics, you can set equations equal to each other, and you can cancel all that stuff and create new formulas. And they expect you to do this on the AP exam. But one common one is setting centri centripetal force equal to the force uh, due to uh, force of gravity or gravitational force. So that is. Um, m times v squared over r equals uh, g times m1 times m2 divided by r squared. Cancel the masses out or mass on both sides, and you're left with a formula. You can rearrange that, do stuff like that. So that's cool. You also have to uh, deal with cars on inclines going in a circle, which is like problems associated with banks. So you need to know how to do that. And now you have rotational kinematics. So remember, I was saying you need to memorize kinematic equations because these are going to come back and haunt you, and they do haunt you, uh, with the rotational kinematics. So essentially, you have the same equations, but you have different variables, the same for different things, but they're similar in that, like, your force equivalent is going to be torque, your mass equivalent is going to be moment of inertia, and then your acceleration equivalent is going to be angular acceleration, velocity, angular velocity, momentum, angular momentum. So you just need to know those things. And uh, torque, for, uh, this is a big one, is equal to R times F times sine of theta. So this is similar to work, except it's not. So like when you're pushing a door open, uh, uh, R would be like the height or where you push on the door to the hinge, basically. And then F would be the force which, uh, that you push it with the, the door with. And theta would be like the angle at which you push it. So that's just a, a quick rundown of that, but that's important. So then now we're gonna move on to oscillations. So now oscillations, there's a lot of stuff you have to do, like springs, pendulums, all sorts of stuff. <laughs> But first things first, Hooke's law, F equals negative KX. K is a spring constant, it's important to know. You also need to know how to calculate effective spring constants. So uh, effective, this sort of is similar to like later in the video, we're gonna talk about series and parallel circuits. That's how I sort of thought about effective spring constants, but you need to know how to calculate effective spring constants. And then uh, you need to know elastic potential energy, one F KX squared. And you also need to know period and frequency of pendulums and springs. So pendulums and springs, you know, they move in an oscillating manner. And you need to know the period and frequency. Period and frequency are just uh, inverses of each other, so you need to know the formulas for that. You also need to know the period and frequency of waves. Waves are also another type of oscillation. And you need to know how to calculate velocity of waves with uh, the tension force, as well as linear mass density. That's a formula that you need to know. Then you also need to know constructive and deconstructive interference. And you also need to know all about harmonics and like harmonic numbers, and you need to be able to calculate wavelength and frequencies of waves based on length, harmonic numbers, and velocities. And when I say like calculate, you need to be able to calculate this, be prepared because they're going to rearrange stuff. They're not always going to ask for the same thing every time. So just be prepared, be familiar with the formulas. That's what I'm trying to get at. And you also have more calculations with sound waves specifically and with like open and closed tubes. And uh, so you need to be able to know the difference between those two situations and calculate uh, stuff like that. And Moving on to electricity and stuff. So when you have a charge, like you have a positive charge in space, it creates, not create, I don't want to say creates, but there exists an electric field around that positive charge or negative charge or whatever. And the electric field is actually equal to the force on the charge divided by Q. And this is all assuming like a test charge comes in. You have this thing called a test charge. And that's all important stuff. I can't get into it right now, but Know that, know the electric field formula, and also you need to know Coulomb's law, which is basically the it's very similar to the Newton's law of gravitation except with charges. So it's constant K times Q1 times Q2 divided by R squared, where R is the distance between the two charges. That's important to know. You can do cool stuff with that as well. And then when you have charge and it flows through a wire, you get current and you get electricity, which you know electricity is kind of important, so yeah. But yeah, so uh Current is the flow of charge. I mentioned that already, flow of electrons, and that's denoted by the word or by the letter I. V equals IR is the bigger formula you're gonna to need to know for circuits. Voltage equals current times resistance. You also need to know power, which we were talking about earlier, but this in circuits equals I times V, which is just power equals current times voltage. You need to know that, and you can actually do more substitutions like I was talking about earlier. Substitute stuff in, get more formulas out of those two equations. And yeah, that's exciting stuff. You have to, you don't really have to memorize them, but you just, if you know the two base formulas, you can do a lot of stuff with that. And 
So resistors in a circuit can be either in parallel or in series, and so can batteries, and a lot of other things. You need to know the difference in calculating the total resistance or total voltage when in parallel or when in series. This is important. And you know, there's also this man named Kirchhoff. Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff, Kirchhoff. I don't know how to pronounce it. Really sorry, Kirchhoff. Mr. Kirchhoff, so sorry. But he had some rules associated with uh, current and you need to know those uh, rules are very fundamental and like when you read them like the dictionary definition of them you're gonna be like oh that's kind of easy but then when you do a practice problem you're gonna be like how the crap do I apply this and so you really need to know how to apply the formulas or the rules to the problems so make sure you practice a lot and yeah that's pretty much a rundown of all the formulas and concepts you need to know for the physics one exam it's very rough so please Make sure you do your own studying. Make sure you uh, prepare your own way. Read the textbook. Do whatever you need to do. Don't depend solely on this video. About prep books. Prep books. I did buy the Princeton Review AP Physics 1 prep book for this exam. So the, it did go over the content very well. Covered a lot of the formulas, everything, all the concepts very well. I did. I took the practice test, but like not like I didn't sit down and tie myself to any of that. So I'm not sure like if they're so, the difficulty is similar in that way, but I will say the questions are like conceptual in nature, so they will help you in that respect. But honestly, there's also Barons out there, and there's also other uh, plenty of other five steps to five. There's plenty of other prep books that you can try. Uh, I would do your own research, maybe talk to people who've taken the class before that you know, see what they did, and then make a decision on whether to spend fifteen dollars preparing for an exam. And then also. You want to practice previous FRQs. Like, well, in general, you want to practice. You want to get as hands your hands on as much practice material as possible, and especially these practice FRQs. So, practice FRQs are put up like the previous ones are put up every year. So, you want to make sure you've gone through all the uh, FRQs from the this uh, exam format. So that'd be like this past year, I think the year before that. So just make sure you're preparing and by practicing. So you also. Uh, just want to get uh, so my teacher I mean I know teachers will have access to like official multiple choice tests but if you can find your way a way to like get those multiple choice tests maybe if you're not taking the class try and look online somewhere I don't know but you want to get your hands on as much practice material as possible and finally just to summarize you want to be familiar with the format of the exam don't be surprised walking into the test just as basic stuff you want to prepare conceptually because you're going to have to write responses on the FRQs and the multiple choice questions aren't just plug and chug. They're more, they're going to test to see if you really and truly understand the concepts. And you also uh, may need to buy a prep book depending on how well uh, your teacher covered the material or just how well you trust yourself to have covered everything. And also, I mentioned that we are doing uh, that AP exam is very conceptual, but you also still need to know your formulas. So memorize your formulas, create that formula sheet, and get it done. And then finally, you got to put the time in. Like time is important. You have to spend time studying and preparing. You can't just like, even if you just memorize the formulas, you would def definitely be better off. But you want to be able to know how to apply those formulas. And spending time with the topic is going to help. Then actually, last but not least, uh, make sure you just get good sleep. Uh, eat well for the exam and like yeah don't get high before the exam or anything like that just just go in there and ace it you'll do fine thank you for watching this video you can feel free to subscribe or unsubscribe dislike like whatever you want to do with your life and yeah see you later